morning, everyone. Happy second Sunday of Advent. We will open this morning with hymn number 65. inserts you have that are appropriate for today. One is light purple for a second Sunday of Advent candle lighting, and the other is green, which are the prayers of the people. And um, I will invite anyone who wishes during the prayers of the people to come up during the prayer. You will not have to be saying anything, but just come up while Bobby's reading the um, his part and uh, light a candle for that and put it in the sand. And we will have a time when uh, we can offer our own prayers. So, that out of the way. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Jesus said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. In whatever posture is most penitent to you, penitent to you let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. <clears throat> Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, Keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. 
the Kyrie. <laughs> Week two, peace. Because of war, because of violence in our communities, because there is still so much unrest in our hearts, we light a candle in peace. Because hatred is still so strong, because so many swords have not yet been remade into plowshares, we light a candle of peace. May the light of this candle A reading of the Hebrew, Hebrew scriptures from the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain shall be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough plains, places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall, shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, 
And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers. The flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let us say responsibly by whole verse the portion of Psalm 85 that is found in your bulletin insert. We'll alternate between epistle and gospel sides of the congregation, beginning with us on the epistle side. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall lift him up from the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. A reading from the second letter of Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire? But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's stand and sing together our gradual hymn number 67. <laughs> Thank you. 
you all please be seated for the gospel reading? <clears throat> the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John, the baptizer, appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John, <coughs> excuse me, now John was clothed, clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Good morning, everybody. Good Prepare ye the way of the Lord. We've heard that a few times during Advent. So, those of us who've lived in the North Country long enough don't really need a weather forecast to tell us when it's going to snow. It's a certain silvering of the sky, a, a charge in the air, and a frenetic energy in the manner of wildlife flocking to the feeders. And we can, we can feel it, can't we? Although we might not consciously name it, we know in our bones what's coming. Change is afoot. Best prepare. It's also the season where we hear the varying gospel passages about the angel Gabriel dropping in on a wide-eyed teenage girl. Then when her cousin feels her own miracle child leap within her at Mary's approach. And then later in Mark and in Isaiah, when the grown John the Baptist declares, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Something's coming. Something big is about to happen. Something that will change the face of the earth. Watch, listen, stay alert, prepare. As people then and now, what do we seek? Hope, comfort, the dawn of a better time. We're in such sore need of that, aren't we? <laughs> the days are short and chill, the nights are long and dark, and the news is never good. It's easy to let it all swallow us to give in to that pervasive feeling of dread when we fear what's coming tomorrow. Yes, scripture assures us that all sorrow and suffering are temporary, that good will, goodness will prevail in the end and that all tears will be dried, but when we're in the midst of it, when we're in the thick of it, sometimes such words don't feel like much to cling to, do they? Just as God's people groaned and bled under the weight of their oppression at the time of Christ's birth, so now does humanity and this broken world suffer on. What a welcome disruption it would be to find ourselves surprised by joy, our souls drinking in the wonder of some miraculous sign that God is still with us. Are we ready for it though? Are our hearts and minds open to receive it? When was the last time all of you, when, when was the last time you received a good surprise? Some unexpected moment of jubilation? Can we all remember something like that, you know, in our, hopefully our recent past? Um, perhaps it didn't fix everything, but it served as a means of sort of shaking things up, of recalibrating your mindset, your expectations of how life would be. The Creator's good at signs and wonders, at disrupting the status quo with flashes of the beautiful or the awesome, the profound, perhaps even the absurd. Laughter is as much a medicine for the soul as any holy thing. We need to be shaken up. It's what alerts us to what's coming. God knows what is required to get our attention.
Now, forgive me for likening some of the most profound moments in history to, in, the story, in, the, in, in the story of Christianity to social media trends, but do we all know what a flash mob is? Yes, yeah, several, several hands here. Well, it started about 20 years ago, where it's where people arrange online to be in a public place at a particular time for the purpose, really, of disrupting everyday life, either to do something ridiculous or to perform in some way sing a song, dance, act out a scene, usually to the astonishment or delight or shock of the unwitting bystanders. I'm sure we've all seen one. Someone captures the scene, including people's reactions, and onto the internet it goes. There's usually a person or a group of people who are the instigators, who sort of set up the flash mob and prime it to carry off as planned. Well, I've always thought of the stories of Gabriel and Mary and of Elizabeth and Zachariah, and today's readings, like from Isaiah and Mark, and as their allusions to Christ coming as sort of the flash mob instigators, the ones touching off the events that will eventually lead to, to the Holy Family huddled in the stable, that the heavenly host chorusing in the night sky above the trembling shepherds, and the Magi journeying toward them, bearing their extraordinary gifts, while the star of Bethlehem blazes like a celestial spotlight over the entire pageant. There's nothing subtle about it. Heaven and nature aligning to disrupt the world as they knew it. The world as we know it. Many Decembers ago, my work as a young adult librarian meant organizing a flash mob. At home, my grandmother inquired about our daily exploits, interested but bewildered about the point of it all. In vain, I attempted to explain. But, but dear, I, I still don't understand, Graham persisted. What's it for? This flash mob, why would one even do such a thing? Exhausted and lost for words about how to convey the why of it to an 88-year-old person who had been born on a Vermont farm with no indoor plumbing and used to travel to town with her grandfather on a horse-drawn milk wagon, I, I grabbed my laptop and I handed it to her and I asked her to angle her face to see best out of her one good eye. She was legally blind. Um, as I pulled up a new, a, a new YouTube video that was recently posted from a shopping mall food court. I know that some of you have seen this. In December 2010, a choir arranged a takeover of the shopping center in order to surprise mall goers with the Hallelujah Chorus from Handel's Messiah. The scene, recorded from many vantage points by people who are in on it, opens with a bustling crowd of fatigued, bag-laden holiday shoppers clustered at tables with their Arby's burgers and their coffees, with mall employees wearily taking orders and pushing brooms through the throngs, while some hired pianist chops out a perfunctory jingle bells on an upright piano. Have any of you seen this? You've seen it, yeah, a bunch of nods. And then, a young woman, formerly absorbed with her phone, suddenly stands up and in a clear soprano trills out the first hallelujah. Soon, rumpled fathers, custodians in coveralls, grandmas in holiday sweaters, all choir members in disguise, also rise, their voices harmonizing above the din as the food court chatter dies and the unwitting real mall customers freeze and stare. It goes on with reactions from onlookers of all ages captured. Stunned toddlers lifted up on high, teenagers temporarily shaken out of their disdain, their faces alight with genuine smiles, folks grinning, even tearing up. The final hallelujah brings everyone to their feet, arms raised, and everyone, everyone in that crowd, lifting their hands heavenward. Hallelujah, let's do that right now. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Well, Graham, sat there, clutching the laptop, tears streaming down her face, which was suffused with delight. Oh, play it again, she demanded. <laughs> From that point on, throughout the Christmas season, she accosted relatives, friends, our priest, even a few strangers, and demanded that they get right onto that internet and look up the YouTube flash mob where they sing hallelujah. It was a frequent rerun, she knew. And at the end, Graham would always raise her hands heavenward as a part of the choir. As embarrassing as this new obsession became, especially at the supermarket and at Costco, her zeal reminded me a little bit of John the Baptist, actually. Hey, look everyone, something big is happening here. Here is our God, let's make ready to greet him. 
cute little story, right? So where does that leave us? What do we do with this holy season as the Sundays of Advent lead us ever further along the road to Bethlehem? Now, mind you, this is not a call to smother our homes in tinsel or take over the outlet stores in Manchester with caroling flash mobs, although that would be fun. Um, but um, <laughs> amid our worries, our list of chores, and our slog through the everyday world, are we prepared for divine disruption? Are we pausing to leave room for the holy? Are we grounded in our faith and at peace enough to read the signs that there is something new afoot, something that will renew the face of the earth again and again and again until we see God face to face? Let's prepare. It's coming, this great hope. It's on its way and it will change things. We can feel it in our bones. Watch, listen, stay alert. Let's ready ourselves to receive it, opening our hearts fully to wonder, comfort, and joy. Thank you. As we rejoice in those words, let us stand and say together the Nicene Creed as found in your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. The Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, Proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the joy at the nearness of Christ, let us offer our prayers to God. May the power of God's holy presence clear a path through the rubble of broken lives and hearts to bring peace to our world and make all of us a new creation. For those, For those enduring, enduring wars, wars over all our earth, the brutality of battle, the devastation of climate change, the scourge, scourge of famine, famine abuse, abuse and, addiction. and addiction, we pray, we pray for, for the healing, healing of peace. 
May we know our gracious God always as our shepherd to console and comfort us and to nourish our deep hungers. For Vivian, Dot, Kelly, and Sean, Cameron, and Christine, and Al and Nancy to know God's presence and God's peace. May we find in the desert places of our lives the gift of forgiveness and the waters of a new Jordan springing up within us to cleanse and heal us. For all those for whom we are estranged, that we find the light of Christ in each other. May the God of John the Baptist and our God continue to raise up our holy prophets in our midst, who will afflict us who are comfortable and comfort us who are afflicted. For, For our, our bishops, Justin, Justin Michael, Michael, and Shannon, and all, and all those who bring joyful news of saving rescue for all people. May God bless the ministries of the United Church of Pakistan, Azad Marshall, moderator, and those of the diocesan staff with the Rock Point Commons staff as they witness the love and peace of Jesus. For all, For all of, of us in our ministries, in our church, and in, church, church, and in the world. world. May God's healing presence be known by all who are suffering in mind, body, and spirit. We, we lift up David and his family, Andy and, Andy and Susan, Susan Wilfred, Wilfred, Jim, Jim Gus, Gus, and Julie, Julie Robin, 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 Jen, Jordan, Jen, Jen, Dorothea, 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 and, and Harold. Please name others for whom you pray silently or aloud. May those who have gone into the arms of God, especially Lawton Allen and Sonia Phillips, and Norman, yes. know the love of joy of God's heaven. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers, prayers for these, these your servants. servants. Please name those others for whom you pray. Jim. May the God who is our future in the gift of Jesus Christ hold us always in the embrace of faithful love and bring us to new heavens and a new earth. Recall, Recall us, us to our, our baptism, baptism, O Lord, and, and hear our cries for ourselves and for, and for the, the whole world. world. For we, we pray in the name the of the one who came, who came Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ the Lord. our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other signs of peace.
peace. Jim, lots of peace. Let us sing together in 343. Savior gave us in whichever form is more meaningful to you. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Um, are there any announcements this morning, other than that there's coffee hour? Okay, did everyone hear that? Christmas tree set up after coffee hour. And we need two strong men to get the tree down off the shelf in the back room and out. Okay. I see three possibilities. Whoops. <laughs> <coughs> now, if you'll open. <laughs> Um, please uh, open your prayer books to page 101 and let's pray the uh, general thanksgiving together. Almighty 
God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. May Almighty God, by whose providence our Savior Christ came among us in great humility, sanctify us with the light of his blessing and set us free from all sin. Amen. Amen. May he whose second coming in power and great glory we await make us steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. Amen. May we who rejoice in the first advent of our Redeemer at his second advent be rewarded with unending life. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us forever. Amen. Amen. And our closing hymn is number 59.